So they'll they'll likely keep a player because he's going to count against the cash spend as well in their base salary. Right. Yeah. Just so you're telling me I need another year of Charles Clay? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Salary's not guaranteed. Charles Clay, from a cash spend perspective, Charles Clay isn't necessary. You don't need the cap. You don't need the cap. You need to spend the cash. So I need a tight end that can catch more than 21 passes. You need a tight end who's going to play more than eight games, too. He totally killed my whole argument. Because <laughs> I, all I you see that's that's why that's what I'm talking about the set the increase of the cap like this this little ten million dollar thing. That's what I was doing. <laughs> that's what I was going to talk that's about. Scarlet Witch, do. And I, this morning I'm thinking about it. I'm like I'm going all right. So the Bills rookie pool is going to cost ten million. Do they just say okay that ten million that the the salary cap's going up that's our rookie pool. All right, what are we going to do with the rest of it? Are we going to cut players? The dead money will take care of that? Or are we going to sign veteran players and that's their signing bonus will take care well, of it? And you then what. this guy just totally scarlet witched my head. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This is the only place you're going to hear an argument that Charles Clay is still in the bills because the bills can't afford to let him go. You, yeah. <laughs> they literally can't afford to let him go. You can't afford to let him go. No. So if he's still on the team, he's too, he, you got you to pay him. Remember yeah. this. If he's still on this team, we're just as upset as you. <laughs> But financially, they have to spend this money because Sorry, the cash man. Did we ever find out what the penalty is? In the CBA? Yeah. Is it a... I think it's very, very bad. Does it decrease their cap for the I don't, following year? I don't know. I, I think don't, it might be. I think it might decrease their salary cap. Maybe they just look at it and say, who cares? But I can't imagine them... I'll, I can't imagine them saying, you know, let's not worry about that. Collect a bargaining agreement, <laughs> that little guy. Let's don't not worry about, about that, that little guy. guy. Ram or Thor? What was that? Team Ramrod. Team Ramrod. You didn't say it. I wrote it on the paper. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Draft is interesting because we heavily rely on connections, and I believe we had a we had a Q and A. Was it was it Jeff Farner? Yeah, he came yeah, yeah. he came in. Um, <clears throat> Ask about the draft. Yeah, I mean, you just want to grab it real quick. Well, I mean, he was talking specifically about what players the Bills would. Oh yeah, we will get to those. We'll definitely yeah. get to those. I'm just talking about the overall scope of what the Bills could do at the draft mm-hmm. because it always varies. There's always speculation. You guys are gonna see. Three million mock drafts. Mm-hmm. Like the Bills will have taken the entire landscape of college football by the time we get to the draft because of so called experts. Speaking of trading picks, people are curious about what the Buffalo Bills could do yeah. uh, with all their picks. Now, I have narrowed it down to nine teams. Um, I mean, they could they could do anything with anybody. I mean, yeah. Bean has, in two years, has, has made connections with teams as far as draft day goes and everything. Uh, so they say, oh, the Bills might trade here, the Bills might trade here. Here are the nine teams that I, th- I think the Bills have an inside track to talk to mm-hmm. when it comes to trading up or trading down, okay? The three obvious ones, we talk about the Chiefs, the Eagles, and the Panthers, yeah. just just by sheer familiarity, yeah. okay? Chiefs are gonna be uh, picking one of the last four picks mm-hmm. when this episode was filmed. They're going to have 29 through 32. The Eagles have uh, 25th, mm-hmm. and the Ravens have 16th. Or no, I'm sorry. The Panthers have 16th. Right. All right? So that's the familiarity they have with them. So if the Bills are looking to trade back, a lot of Bills fans will have the ghosts of Christmas past if they trade back with, with the Kansas, Chiefs. They were Kansas City. Uh, but that being said, the only team that they have familiarity with is the Giants. And that's because the, of the GM the, connection. Being Gettleman. Yeah. And they're picking sixth. So. Yeah. I don't really. I mean, would it cost you a lot to go from nine to six? I don't, nah. think, I don't think so. Nah. But if you're the Bills, I don't really think you're willing to give up a second. Because I think that's probably what it would cost. Yes. It's a second to get from nine to six. I, it's not a big jump. I simply just. Those three. I brought up those initial three teams because that's where McDermott was. Right. And then Bean. I brought up the Giants because the Gettleman connection we talked about a lot last year, nothing manifested from them. No. I think that's still a possibility because they do know each other. And I yeah. think what last year proved was a lot of our speculation is the fact that 
maybe that wasn't a very such a warm relationship in Carolina yeah. because the, the Giants picked second and the Bills were trying to get up there to get a quarterback. You mm-hmm. think talks would have went smoothly and they could have t- taken the, uh, the Bills to the cleaners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in respect. Big so. time. Um, so that's the only team. Plus, the Giants don't really save much. Gi- Giants really aren't in cap jail. No. So, um, the, the move back wouldn't save them a, a ton of money. You have you got the numbers on? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. So if you move from uh, just in first year contract numbers, so if you're looking at the rookie pool, you move from the uh, the Giants are at six. That's eleven point three mil to the Bills nine point seven. So. Yeah, it's it's peanuts. It's not massive, but mind you, that's that's over the life of the contract. We're in the first year. We're talking less than a million dollars. Okay, all right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, one point one million dollars. That's okay. the difference in in sliding right. down. Okay. So one mil in cap space. I mean, is I mean, there's, there's you're not doing you're not doing anything for a million dollars in cap space. All right. So the other five teams that I was talking about, referencing that the Bills, where the Bills could move in the 2019 draft, you got Tampa, Cincy, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Denver. Mm-hmm. Now we're like Denver. What are you talking about, Denver? They're, well, uh, you remember they had a deal in place with Denver until Bradley Chubb became available, right, to their pick, which means the Bills had to move. Well, I think the Bengals and the Broncos have have similar needs, yes. right? Um, they they have very similar needs. So <laughs> they're at ten and eleven. They're right after. Right, and the Bills are at nine, and yeah. the relationship's already been established with the Bengals. Yeah, the, with so, Cordy Glenn. Right, exactly. So I have a feeling like the Broncos being on your list, there might be a little urgency there since the Broncos and or since the Bills and the Bengals have done business before. I always, th- yeah, but I always think of it as, <laughs> I think of it as the fact, you know, they had a deal to move up with the Broncos and mm-hmm. it just didn't happen, and then the Broncos were like. All right, we got you next year, man. <laughs> we'll have that next year. But how, to me, from a financial standpoint mm. and from the standpoint of the Bills not having the same, not, not necessarily having the same needs as the, as the Bengals and the Broncos, if they were able to trade back to 11 where the Bengals are, yeah, oh, perfect, financially. And they still get the guy that they want. Oh, yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah. The other three, we talk about Tampa, if they want to trade up. Uh, they're fifth. Since uh, we talk about since Baltimore is at twenty-two and Cleveland's at seventeen. Um, so if they want to trade back, you know they, they traded the Tyrod Taylor for the third round of last year, so that that that's established. Um, and uh, Baltimore is who they traded with for the Tremaine Edmonds pick. Right. Tampa is who they traded with for the Josh Allen pick. So like I said, these lines of communication are already open. I don't know how that will change now that the fact that Arians is in Tampa. Right. So, I, I, well, Arians is not a lover of rookies. drafted players. No. Yeah, he's not a lover. Of he wants players. veterans. Yeah. And, and you know, what I mean, he likes that. So, um, in that respect, my if I had to narrow that list down from nine to two, if they have to trade up, I, I deem Tampa as the likely spot at five. If they trade back, I just, I think Cincinnati. I agree with you. Cincinnati, eleventh, probably yeah. the place they would go. Initially, that'd be the two spots. I, I would say, where do you think the Bills would trade up to? Tampa. Where do you think the Bills would trade back to? I'd be like, uh, further than Cleveland. I think it gets a little dicey. My point is this, and I wanted to ask you. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that with the salary cap going up, uh, an approximate you said based on revenue, yeah, it goes yeah. up a projected around ten million dollars. Well, it has. I mean, that's not that's not normal either. You know, the yeah. last three years have been sort of strange in that regard. A lot of times, salary cap would go up a few million, but with the CBA, it really escalates because they base the percentage of the money that uh, is designated as the quote unquote salary cap mm-hmm. is actually based off of an incre- the increase in revenue. So, you know, a lot of people will say, well, if the salary cap's based off of revenue, what happens if the NFL starts losing money? Well, the CBA doesn't don't know what to do with that. <laughs> the salary cap still stays the same. It does. It just doesn't increase that year. Yeah. Right? So it's based off of, it's increased based off of the amount of revenue. So, unfortunately, from a financial perspective, the NFL is on a crash course with disaster because they keep basing their model off of improvement, right? And if the NFL stops continually making money, then it's... Then the salary cap will stop at their most, at their highest point of revenue, 
and that's where the salary cap will stay because if they're as the revenue slides the back, actual cap yeah it'll be yeah it'll be a ceiling right yeah and, then, and unfortunately as the nfl starts losing money which may not happen for a long time but it's possible right yeah. as the nfl starts losing revenue then Unfortunately, the salary cap will remain at its highest point. It would take a new CBA to come in and renegotiate all that. So the thing I wanted to talk to was, and I wanted to, I wanted to bring it up because there were two things. There's one, there's the salary cap increase, which is roughly around because based on revenue, yeah. we, we project it to be about 10 million. Yeah. What do the bills do with that 10 million? My, my, I have three different options the Ooh, Bills do. Okay. Okay. Three different options the Bills could do with that salary cap increase that they may have or may not have accounted for. Okay. You sign a big fish, and that's part of his signing bonus. Okay. So it's money that you're getting, but you're not yeah. even accounting for it. Like, right. We don't even have to account for this money. He wants he wants uh, $16 million as his first-year bonus. Okay. We're only paying him $6 million because the salary cap went up. Right. Okay. okay. That's one. Um, or you get two veterans, and those are their, their signing bonus. What? Two veterans have like roughly around. If you have three and five, uh, three and seven, five and five. Well, here's here's the problem. Okay. Right. The right. bills right now. And this is going back to last year or in, in the 2018 season. The bills spent the least amount of money in the NFL from a cash perspective. Right. By a mile. Like, they were, like, almost $30 million less in cash spend than everybody else. Uh -huh. And here's the problem with that, right? So the Bills, and we've talked about cash spend. You you actually were the expert in cash spend. I didn't know what the hell you were talking about. You were yeah. like, well, I looked into cash spend. And I was like, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> um, but the way the collective bargaining agreement is is that the teams have to spend so much money over a four-year period. 89%. They have, to set, they have to spend 89% of the salary cap in a rolling four-year period, Right. So they could spend 150% of the salary cap one season. And then the way that works is when a player signs a contract, right, and they get a signing bonus, all that money goes into that year's cash spend. Yes. Right? So it's not like the salary cap where a signing bonus is prorated over the life of the contract. The money that the player gets that day counts against the cash spend for that year. So here's only. the problem. Right. Only. Right. And then their salary every year after that and their bonuses every year after that. Mm -hmm. they, they go against cash spend. But... The Bills right now have to spend 99% of the salary cap in cash the next two years. <laughs> to get to that's to get to 89%. To make 89% happen, they have to spend 99% of the salary cap. And here's the problem. Bills have 10 draft picks. Do you know what doesn't spend money? Draft picks. Draft picks. Right? Because your fifth round pick costs you seven hundred thousand dollars. What the, what do you I looked at the I mean, roster. Did you see how many players were starting at the end of the year that are making under a million yeah, on this team? Most. <laughs> most. So the Bills have to spend money. They don't have a choice. They have to spend money. Oh, so, uh, no. I was just saying at how they were going to spend. Yeah. You know what I mean? How well, and I think that, happen? I think they're going to cheat a little bit, right? So here's how you spend money the easy way. If you've got money to spend, and the Bills do, they have to spend money at we could talk about, well, the Bills aren't going to spend this year. They're going to wait for next year. I'm, they're going to have to spend 200 plus mil. I mean, what's the salary cap? 180, 189? Something, like, something that. like that. They have to spend basically $189 million each the next two seasons in cash to get to 89%. So they got to spend a, a ton of money. So that's why Jerry Hughes extension, very possible, right? That's why... You know, you talk about Trey White getting an extension as soon as the day it's available. Yeah, yes. you gotta you gotta yeah. get that money in right away. And here's sort of the weird thing, right? So December 31st marks the time that you could start negotiating with rookies, right? With those quote unquote off those rookie contracts. The day December 31st hits, Trey White's extension is gonna get signed. Yeah, like it's the gotta spend the uh, money anyway. Um, the easiest way to spend money in the draft is to take your fifth, sixth, seventh round picks and trade them for players that already have four, five, six, seven million dollar salaries that teams are just looking to get rid of. Yeah. Right? That's the easiest way to spend that money. Because you take a player who's gonna make seven hundred thousand and you can turn him into a player that's now going to cost you five million. Right? And unfortunately this is a you just gotta spend it. If you don't use it, it's gone. You just have to spend it. It's like 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 corporate budgets. If you don't spend the money 
bye bye. It's gonna be gone. So they, they have to spend the money. So that's why I think this draft is really, really neat because the bills can trade up as high as they want to go because it'll, they're, they're not worried they're about They're not worried about keeping the draft picks. They don't have to be. They need to spend money. And that terrifies me as a fan to know that they have to spend all this cash, but it's exciting at the same time because I don't know how they're going to do it. Well, how about addition by subtraction? If they cut a guy and he has a huge dead money clause, does that, does that count or is that already counted? Uh, it's a good point. Um, so that doesn't count against cash spend at all. Okay. Because remember, that's money that they're already paid. The only time that that cash spend would count is if it's a guaranteed year. So they'll.